Welcome back everyone to another ESO build video. Today I'm going to be showing you the update for Morrowind for the easy tank build. Now if some of you, well you probably are aware already that there were some changes with Morrowind as far as um, tanks are concerned I guess, like a lot of the changes affects them and funnily enough it basically means that people have to play the same way as this tank was playing in the first place. So for those of you that are already following it, not a lot has changed, but I'll show you what has changed. I'll show you what you can do with your with your gear, what alterations I've added, and obviously where CP distribution goes and all that kind of stuff. And of course, for anyone that doesn't know, I will be going over the skills and showing you how to use them. Now, uh, in the past, everyone was using loads of stamina and bugger all health, which was risky. But um, now you kind of need a little bit more health because your block costs have gone up which means your stamina goes down faster and you now have to rely on heavy attacks, which this build did in the first place to an extent. Um, what that means is you're open a lot more often. Your, your shield is down. Now, to counter that, you need lots of health. And if you're familiar with MMOs anyway, that is how a tank should be. You should have high health and you should be able to not be killed just because a small bug kicks you in the ankle. So we have a lot of health and a decent amount of stamina to be able to block with. Now before this particular build was a shit ton of stamina, it was like 30k, um, 25 if you had a different food on, and around 40 odd k health. Well this has been altered, and now what we have, I'll go into the stats now, I don't really need to buff much and you'll see why in a moment. Um, in fact I don't need to buff at all. Let's go with the magic of food first of all, and put a potion on. And that's all we need to do, just put a potion on and this one buff. We are sitting on 52k health, 20k stam, 10k magicka, there's a reason that's so low, and 2.4k magicka recovery, 34.5k spell resists, and almost, well, 31k physical resists. Now, those resists can actually be a lot higher, like the physical ones specifically, because I don't have a reinforced shield, which I'll get to, and a couple of traits are missing the, the, the right or optimal uh, piece I, I wanted I guess or sorry the piece is missing the trait but the resist is still very very high the health is high the stamina is high now if you switch your food you can use health and stam food that's fine because you'll get 20 52.6k health you'll get 25 and a half k stam so more stamina to block with a lot of stamina but your magical recovery will suffer so you'll lose the best part of 800 magicka recovery overall once all the bonuses stack up. Now I don't want to do that. I'm, I'm quite comfortable with, with the other variation of it but it's entirely up to you. I'll go over the food again at the end but that's what you can do. You can switch your food out. Now the rest of the stats, 64 points into health. So the more health the better. Atronach Mundestone to buff up our magicka recovery because we want to make sure that we can use our magicka abilities more often. And Vampire Stage 4. Yes, you can go Stage 3 if you want, and you won't lose anything for that. Stage 4 is really just for this. So you sneak, and you, you sneak faster for PvP, but this isn't for PvP. But honestly, I can't be bothered with all the messing around. Uh, changing Vampire levels and all this kind of stuff. I have Vampire Stage 4 all the time, and I do not struggle. So it's absolutely fine. And I will come to the Vampire passives as well. But that's, that's it. Vampire, Atronach, Stone, nice stats. We're good to go. Now, let's look at the skills. Pretty standard setup. Very, very similar to my previous tank. If you haven't seen that one already, go check it out. It's the Almost Immortal Warrior tank build. Slightly different to this one. Much more active, but skills are relatively similar. Ignis Shields. The more health you have, the bigger the shield is. This gives me an 8k shield plus 100% extra. So I get a 16k shield but the extra 100% doesn't go onto the group, they get the 8k. Now this has been altered, so it's 50% less effective now to the group, not to me. Um, that is a drop in mitigation for the group, but it's still mitigation for the group nonetheless. It's insane. Like this, shield your group. Six people now have a damage shield they would not have had. So don't look at it as though, oh, it's been nerfed, it's useless. It's not useless, it's still really, really strong. They've just lessened the effectiveness of it a little bit. 
Um, also, incidentally, before we go any further, I did mention this in the other video as well. A lot of tanks uh, were using this, Equilibrium, and it removes your health and gives you Magicka, so you can do this more often. Uh, don't do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. They changed uh, the the way it works in patch notes 3.0.7. PC now have it. We'll get it soon. And basically, instead of removing the ability to heal when you use this skill, um, you heal your own heals 50% less effective, and so are your damage shields. So if you use that skill, this is weaker. You just upset your group because you made their incoming uh, damage mitigation worse. This needs to be strong, more health the better, don't mess with equilibrium on a tank because it will just, there's no need. For you to be able to spam this, you made it weaker. Why do we want to do that? Put it on a DPS, sorcerer that's running out of magic, pop an equilibrium. Yeah, your damage shield is a little bit weaker for you, but at least you can still do your DPS. So I think that has a place more for DPS now than it does for a tank. Anyway, that's a separate subject. And that is now finished. <laughs> okay, um, Igneous Shield, furthermore, this has a major mending when it is active. So if it disappears, the major mending goes away, and if three seconds goes away, obviously if you go over three seconds, it goes as well. But if you turn this on, three seconds worth of major mending. Let's put the buff timers on. For those of you that don't know already, or that haven't found them on console, go into combat, just down the bottom here somewhere. Here we go. Turn them on, always show, and I'll turn permanent ones off because I don't want to see Mundestone all the time. But there's your buff timers there. So if I activate this, see that little yellowy green one there? That's your major mending. Three seconds worth of extra heals that you do. Now the heal that we do is Dragon Blood, which is our next skill. If I can find it. Green Dragon Blood, this has been morphed to. Now, while this is active, you gain 20% stamina recovery, 20% health recovery and 8% healing received. That means heals that you do and heals that you get off other people as well. Any heal that affects you, increase to heals. So don't, and the, the heal itself gives you back health based on your missing health. So the more missing health you have, the higher percentage of the heal, or the higher uh, flat heal, I guess. Like the lower the percentage of your health, the more you get back. Now, obviously, if you're a health tank, this is fine because the more health you have, the bigger that heal is going to be and you have a less risk factor because you can actually go quite low before you need to use it. If you have low health as a tank, you're probably going to over spam this because you're going to take too much damage a lot, lot faster. So the more health you have, the better. It's a really, really handy skill, but it's not just a heal. Like we said here, it gives you recovery. Now, obviously, stamina recovery doesn't affect you while you're blocking, but because we aren't blocking all the time, while your guard is down, you do recover. So keep this on. You get three buffs there. Fortitude, Endurance, Major of each, and also um, the Healing Received bonus as well, which I've forgotten what it's called already. It doesn't have one. It just says Healing Received, which is nice. Oh, sorry, Mind of Vitality. There you go. Now, um, where are we? Pierce Armor, this is our main taunt. It reduces physical and spell resistance of the target and keeps them taunted for 15 seconds. That is pretty standard stuff. Starts off as Puncture in the Sword and Board skill line. Make sure you use this. Hold on to the boss, don't let him go. If that taunt drops, boss goes mental, runs after the group. Don't let it go. Absorb Magicka, this is absolutely insane. Increases your reduction to block cost by 8%. Sorry, decreases your block cost by 8% and also decreases the amount of incoming damage when you block. So it's, it's, it's a mitigation uh, ability just for having it slotted. So less cost and less damage. But if you activate it like this, you have 20 seconds. I think it's 20 or 30 seconds. Sorry, my, my mistake of uh, 26k damage shield versus Magicka projectiles. So if you have a fireball coming at you, put this on, it will absorb it straight away, the whole thing. You can take up to 26k in the face, resist excluded, because obviously this don't have resist. And then when you do consume that, you are healed for 17% of your max health, which is stupid. So Lord Warden or Raka or anyone that fires fireballs at you or Hadoukens or whatever, uh, put this on and it will absorb it. Another one comes in, put it on, it'll absorb it. In fact, on Lord Warden, 
on ICP, Imperial City Prison, when he goes into all those little shades, well, machine gun, spam this, and he can't kill you. And all the four shades, if you just taunt all four of them and try and hug around the middle somewhere, every fireball that they fire at you, and don't do it for every single one because you can take a couple anyway, but just one of them, deflect it or absorb it, and it'll just fill your health up. It's insane. Really, really powerful skill. Uh, bone Shield, this is your other, it's actually more for Bone Surge. This absorbs damage just like the Igneous Shield does, except this is for you. Just for you. Unless one of your group members um, takes the synergy, and that's essential. They have to take the synergy because it will shield four other people, or one and three others. For the person who synergizes it and three others. Now, this will shield them for 60% of their max health. So if you take this and this, as you can see, they stack. And your group has automatically got Igneous Shield on one anyway because it hits a group member. And someone synergizes this. Multiple people in your small stack up or your group that are close by have a huge amount of damage mitigation. It's very, very powerful. So make sure that you use that quite efficiently and people must take that synergy. Also for doing so, the person that takes the synergy um, is, is granted minor vitality, which increases their healing received for doing so. So not only do they get a damage shield, they also get some heals, uh, some more heals incoming. So if they're in trouble and they just grab that shield at the last minute, whatever heal they were just about to receive is stronger. Really, really nice. Ulti, really, really, really powerful. A measly 100 ultimate makes you block for free for 7 seconds and all of your taunts and sword and board abilities, including this one, this deflective thingy here, are for nothing. So for argument's sake, again, we'll use something with fireballs. We use machine gun from Lord Warden or, or rack out or something like that, whatever you want to use. And you pop this. Not only are you blocking for free, but you can absorb those machine guns until it runs out for no additional cost. It's crazy. So, very, very powerful skill. And it's cheap. So that's your really cheap oh shit button. Now, back bar. This can be switched around. I actually don't use that that often. Let's put it to what we do use. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, uh, chains. I was about saying, it's it's chain. From 22 meters away, you hit the target with it and it chains it to your feet. Just pulls it in. Like a scorpion from Mortal Kombat. The get over here move. Um, heroic Slash. Hit the target with this. You reduce their movement speed, yes, but that's irrelevant um, for PvE, really. You reduce their incoming damage to you, or their outgoing damage, but your incoming, by 15% for 12 seconds. And you gain 6 ultimate over 9 seconds. 1.5 every 1 second. So that's really, really strong. Um, then you also have this, which is in a rage. This is an undaunted skill from the skill line. It's a ranged taunt, basically from 28 meters away. You can taunt someone from, so that post there, I could taunt him from here. No problem. I don't have to run up to him, stab him, run all the way back again. I don't have to do that. Just taunt him. He'll come to me. And this is essential also. I've already mentioned about certain synergies. 37% chance that allies targeting this enemy that's very important can activate a radiate synergy dealing x amount of damage to the target and over two seconds it will spread out and then blow up now that looks like a tiny amount of damage but it's false because it's based well it's not false it's misinterpreted i guess for us it would be low but for the person taking the synergy it's based off of their max resources so if you have perhaps a magic templar with the safer argument's sake 40k magicka um, if he was to pop this synergy, he could get in excess of around 30k area of effect blast from this. It's really strong. Obviously buffs considered, but anywhere between 20 and 30, it's nuts. So the way to take this synergy is there is um, an effect that lands on the target, like a pink swirly effect. It's, it's quite obvious to spot. Now in a bunch of ads, obviously you can see him, but it's hard to pick out that one person. But you can't just have it on the target and then use it. You, physically, the DPS, if you were one, if that target there was glowing with that effect, you need to physically put your cursor on that target. If you do that, you will then see the synergy prompt on the screen and then you can take it. If you target him over there, you won't get that prompt. So look out for it. If you see it on a target, highlight it, bang, take it straight away. You need it. It's really, really powerful. Um, these two are changeable, uh, specifically this one actually. I don't use this in all situations, but it's very, very powerful. As I explained in my previous tank video, uh, gap closes uh, in terms of like moving quickly, I guess. 
you move really fast when you have this on and you don't take anything more than 75 uh, sorry 25 percent of all the income and damage because your reduction to damage is 75 percent while this is on um 75 percent from incoming uh increases your speed negates or removes uh immobilization effects the only problem is your magicka recovery is disabled while this is on so your stam recovery is fine that stays going up it keeps going up but um your magic recovery is disabled so just use this very carefully but in situations where you're in trouble or you have to move fast or you have to position ads really, really quickly, this is awesome. It's not very commonly used in PVE, although for me personally, I've used it a lot. Um, a couple of our guild members didn't use this in the past and now they use it all the time. It's really, really strong. Situational, of course, and just practice with it to see if you like it or not. Also, in snares and roots and all that kind of stuff, you just pop it and you're out. Even if you want to cancel, just press it and cancel again, you're out. Now, uh, that can be switched out for, where have they gone? Choke and Talons, very simple. All that smoke area there, that's the range of it. All targets in this area will be pinned to the ground for four seconds. Roots come out of the ground, they get pinned. And I'll demonstrate that in a moment. I'll just go to a beach somewhere and throw some shapes at some mud crabs. But basically, you chain them in and then root them on the spot. And they'll stay there for four seconds. The, the damage mitigation from each target is re sorry. The damage from each target is reduced by fifteen percent. So you take less from all the targets inside of it. Also, it prevents them from running away. So certain situations where you have loads and loads and loads of ads, you haven't quite taunted them all yet, and they're likely to run off. Just root them all on the spot. Taunt them all. Keep them busy. Root them again. Just keep them with you. Not used for every single dungeon trial situation, but situational one nonetheless in fact we have a telecoat skeleton we can do this to you can see what the effect is here we go like that and every single target in here will have that same effect now the chains in case you wanted to see what they look like if you haven't seen they look like that the skeleton doesn't move unfortunately but they'll come to you now what is important to remember is this effect underneath his body he's stunned he cannot be stunned while that white circle is around his feet so if you've changed someone or someone's cc'd it someone else has stunned it he won't come to you until that effect is gone so keep your eyes open for that no effect he can be chained if he has an effect he can't but he can be rooted now another thing with the chains as well if they're already cc'd don't worry because you get the magicka back if he can't be pulled There you go. If a target cannot be pulled, you restore 100% of the ability's cost. So, he's stunned. It just refunds it. So I use it and then it comes back. Um, obviously it doesn't work so well on the skeleton because he can't be pulled anyway. This is where we're getting to. This is really, really, really powerful. It heals you based on 23% of your missing health. So the lower the health, the bigger the heal every one second it's massive but you do have to channel it so time it not only that and this is the most important part when you are using it once a second you gain five ultimate <clears throat> so this can generate ultimate a heavy attack or a light attack can generate ultimate ignis shield does i'll show you the passes for that in a moment and then well look at my ultimate now it's going up at a steady rate three every second from the light attack so three 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 now i'm going to combine a light attack with an invigorating drain watch it now a lot lot faster really really high ulti gain you mix that with igneous shields as well i'm getting war horns really really quick so if you get any windows of opportunity where you're not really taking too much damage keep that thing running you'll build up war horns like hell oh of course this one here if you want a no ship button, if you're on the axis and you know you got to build it quick, just be careful. I think I can build up a uh, ulti relatively fast. I'm not even going to finish that. It's done. You can use that every 10, 15 seconds, depending on how you build your ultimate up. There's several ways to do it, but this is really, really fast. If you get a window, 
Use it for God's sake. 15 ulti in 3 seconds is, is really fast. Now, the other one is, of course, Aggressive Warhorn. This increases your max health, your max stam, and your max magic for you and your entire group for 30 seconds, and above all, increases all of their crit damage done by 15% for nearly 10 seconds. Very, very powerful. But only use it if you have enough ultimate to do so. Of course, build it up and build it up and everything like that, but if you are in trouble, use the block ulti. Okay, now we need to go stop hitting that target over passives. These are not really essential. Uh, you don't really do damage, you don't really care about snares and all the rest of it. Or poison and burn and status effects because you're not a damage dealer, so whatever. If you want them, put them in there. If you don't, don't worry about it. I'd recommend maybe a couple just to take the edge off, but you, you really don't need them. What you do need is the chains. Then, Draconic Power. Uh, increases the amount of damage you can block. Increases the healing received while a draconic power is active. That is very, very essential. This ability here, this heal, while it's active, you get those three buffs. Recovery, recovery, and healing received. So keep it active. But because it's a draconic power ability, you gain a further 12% healing received from this passive here for having it active. So you have 20% increased healing received for having it turned on. One from the skill, one from the passive. So your healers have a really easy job while you have that skill turned on. Increases health recovery, blah. It increases your spell resistance, that's bloody huge. 3.2k. Gotta get those passives. These are essential. Igneous shields, of course, we need that. Now, increases duration of earth and heart abilities, of course, you want it to last as long as possible unless it runs out. Battle roar. Using an ultimate gives you back health, stamina, and magic. 52 points per ultimate point. That is really, really, really needed. That's the way a DK sustains, you need it. Yes, of course, if you haven't noticed already, we're a Dragon Knight. Earth and Heart. When you cast an Earth and Heart ability, like this, you increase your group's uh, weapon damage by 5% for 20 seconds, and once every 6 seconds, if you use an Earth and Heart ability, you gain 3 ultimate, but you must be in combat. Then the most important one, obviously, apart from this, is when you cast an Earth and Heart ability, you restore 990 stamina. Now, before it was based on 5% of your max stam, so obviously people had as much stam as possible to just spam this and get loads back. Now, no matter if you have 2k stam or 100k stam, you always get this amount back. And it is really, really good, especially if you're blocking. Like, so we'll waste some stamina. Now, stamina doesn't replenish while you're blocking, but if you use this, it does. Fills it up. Very nice. And our magical recovery is so high that we can just keep spamming shields within reason. Now, you'll notice I don't have a resist buff. That's because of the gear, and we're coming to it. Just finish off these passives. Sword and board, get every single one of these. I'm not going to go through them too, too um, detailed, but basically block cost reduction, uh, movement speed while blocking, uh, projectile reduction to incoming. Oh, there is one. No, I think that's in the heavy armor, actually. Is it in there? Yeah, there's a heavy armor one, but I'll come back to that. But you need all of these uh, passives, every single one of them. Now what you do need... I'm 7 heavy, by the way. Max this out, 2.5k physical resistance, very nice. Uh, increase your health recovery, which is a bit blur, but you do receive resources back when you get hit. Now this did get nerfed a bit, but it's still pretty strong. You get 1k resources back once every 4 seconds, you can't be sneezed at, it's, it's still stuff back. Uh, Juggernaut, for each piece of heavy armor you have, you get 2% max health. We're health tank, we want as much max health as possible. Why not? Uh, this one increases your weapon damage the more you get hit. Don't worry about that. That's more for PvP. Um, and this one's very, very strong as well. Restores um, an additional 25% of your stamina or magic with heavy attacks while wearing heavy armor. Five pieces specifically. We do heavy attack, we get more stamina back. Also, 8% healing received. Flat out, we have 28% healing received now, so long as we have this ability turned on. Otherwise, it's just a flat 8%, but 28% now. So, the heals we get and the heals we do are big. <clears throat> okay, Vampire, very, very important. Obviously, we went over these two skills. It's Elusive Mist, by the way, and Invigorate and Drain. This is the speed morphed version of the Mist form, and this is the ulti gain version of the heal. Now, Supernatural Recovery, 10% Magicka and Stam Recovery, that is essential, get that as soon as possible. 
Undeath, this is god mode. Basically, under 50% health in certain increments, you take up to 33% less damage. Now, if you're a 30k tank, you start kicking this uh, passive in when you get to 15k. I'm not. I'm 52k. So, mine starts at 26k health. Mine starts, what, nearly 10k more or sooner. So, my damage mitigation is a very nice nice level. So I can go quite low. I can take more, less and less and less and less damage the lower I go past that. Then I can pop one of these and go to full health. It's really, really good. A little bit of risk for reward. You have to go quite low to try and get the most out of it, but it's very, very nice. It makes you really, really strong. Fighters Guild. This is a switch out skill. I don't use it all the time because it's expensive, but if you put this on the ground, I'll switch it for the chains because you don't always use chains. Anyone inside of that gets 8% less damage done to them. Also, there is another passive alongside of it. Um, where are we? Minor protection 8%. Increases their stamina recovery by 10%. That includes yours. So when your shield is down inside of here, you get recovery. Which is nice, and so does everybody else. I'm not sure what the limit is. It might be on 6 people inside there, but still, it's mitigation nonetheless. Keep a shield up as well. Keep a bone shield up, and your group is very nicely protected inside this little circle. But like I said, it's expensive, so you need to make sure you're really on top of your heavy attacks and igneous shields to keep your stamina up. Else, it's going to run your stamina out quite quickly. Although it does last 20 seconds, so, I mean, it's a long buff. It's quite nice. Intimidating Presence is essential for that because it reduces the cost by 15%. And of course, get these because every time a Daedra, Undead, or Werewolf dies, you get 8, eight ultimate back. And your ulti regen is already really high, let alone if things start dying around you. Undaunted Skills. Max these out. This, take a synergy, you get resources back. This, for each type of armor you wear, 2% to all your resources. Now, of course, if you had one light and one medium, you would get 6% because we'll be using medium, light, and heavy combined. But I don't need the extra magicka because I have high recovery. And I don't need the extra stamina because I'm heavy attacking all the time anyway. So I'll take the extra health bonus 2% in here. And I did explain this in my previous video. But I'll go over it again. Um, if I was to take away two pieces of heavy armor right here, I would be down to 10% bonus. In the Undaunted skill, I get 2% per piece. Now, I would end up getting 2% back into here. <coughs> Excuse me. For each extra piece, like heavy, light, medium. So I go down to 10, put on a medium piece, get 2%. I'm up to 12. Put on a light piece, another 2%. I'm up to 14 so 511 or 7 is exactly the same health bonus. The only difference is if you do go to light and medium, which I do not, you will lose resistances, you will lose return on constitution, and you will also gain 2% more magic and 2% more stam. 2% of that, those stats there, is not a lot. So I really don't need to bother with it. I'm quite more, I'm quite, I'm more comfortable having 7, seven heavy, Loads of health, loads of resists, all that shiny stuff, and just tank rather than trying to mess with, with micro-resources, which is, is barely noticeable. In fact, it's actually not noticeable. So, personally, my recommendation is to go full um, 7 heavy, and you're done. Uh, what have we got here? Aggressive Warhorn's already in there. Don't need that. Nord. Yes, we are Nord. Um, that one's irrelevant. Max Stam increased by 6%. Max Health is increased by... Where does that gone? That's there. Sorry, max stam is 6% and increase your health recovery. Health recovery isn't essential, but the stamina is nice. Uh, increases your max health by 9% and gives us cold resist for God knows what reason. And reduces the damage you take by 6%. So you, you've you got built-in mitigation. Very strong. Now you can go Imperial if you prefer. You do actually get a 12% health bonus and a 10% stam bonus. So it's a little bit higher, but you don't get the mitigation. Um, but instead what you do get is if you light or heavy attack, you have a chance, I think 10% chance to gain back 6 or 7% of your max health. So of course the more health you have, the more beneficial that is. But personally for this particular setup, I prefer the Nord. Although Imperial is really strong. Alchemy, finally the last most important um, passive in the game, as far as I'm concerned, increases the duration of your potions. If you're using crafted pots, specifically tripods or something like that, they can last 47 seconds and your cooldown is 45. So as long as you keep popping those potions, you will have constant uptime on your recovery buffs. 
Or any other potion that you use as crafted, in fact. Okie dokie. Um, CPs. CPs. These are not set in stone. Yes, I'm fully aware there are some jump points that have been put in place recently. And if you are familiar with them and want to tweak these, by all means do so. But just to put them in a comfortable position that makes sense at the moment, this is where I put them. 65 in Hardy, 65 in Elemental Defender. You can go 70 if you want, but once you hit 70, I wouldn't put any more points in here because it's going to cost you 30 points to get one more percent out of it. It's really not worth it. 50, 50 points in Thick Skinned. Nearly a 20% reduction to dot damage, and as you know, there's a shit ton of dots in this game. Ironclad, you're the one taking the big hits. Put some resistances into heavy attacks, or well, then not heavy attacks specifically, but single target hits. So it can be a heavy attack or a, a fireball or whatever. Anything that hits you with one hit will, will be reduced by this passive. And finally, 10 points in quick recovery increases our heat and receive. So we're now up to what 30.9 um, passively. And you get this bonus here, which means while you res people, you take 15% less damage. You will be resing someone, you'll be in a dungeon, someone will die, you'll be in a trial, it'll be shit or bust, and it's the last chance, and you'll pick someone up. Really, really nice passive um, champion point to have. 30 in Warlord, so you reduce the cost of break free, because in the new trial specifically, you get stunned a lot, and other places too, but a lot in there, so this is really nice. Uh, 20, 75 points into Tenacity. Um, you don't really have to go 75, you can go 70 and you'll still be alright, but, <clears throat> excuse me, I've split these up just evenly because I don't want to waste too many points. If you put the further 25 points in each of these trees and max them out to 100, you're going to have the same problem as you had before, where you are hitting diminished returns so hard that you're going to waste 25 points for 1%. It's rubbish, so just go 75 in each of these. Magical recovery and return on a heavy attack. Then your final ones, straight into block cost. Cheaper blocks. What else do you want? This is a tree that I argue with quite a lot, but to be honest, this is for damage. This is all for damage. And none of these little tiny passives, 10 or 30, are going to benefit me any way, shape, or form. You could argue that Repost will be handy, 15% chance to return damage, but what is 2k going to do on an 80 mil boss? Nothing. So, I'll use my points and I'll, I'll keep on the diminished returns. I don't really care because I'm not going to use them for anything else. I don't need an elemental expert. I don't need magic damage, I don't need penetration, I don't need anything. So, I'll max out the amount of healing I can do, and I'll max out the amount that I can crit at. Then the final 10 points that are just sitting there doing nothing, just sling them into heavy attacks, so you've got a tiny bit of damage, it's pointless, but that's, you've got nowhere else to put them. So that's where I put those. Now, the gear, obviously you want to know what that is. It's pretty much the same as before. <coughs> now... Don't laugh, because I do have some really bad traits, but the setup is nice. Um, and I'm going to show you what you can do to uh, optimize it as well. It's Hulk and Drugger, five piece. Now this should be gold by now, but honestly, I'm out of cash. So I would gold that out for, two re <coughs> for one reason, in fact, and that is to increase the resistances that the defending trait gives you. You want a defending, one-handed, uh, Drew King, not Drew King, uh, hulking Drugger. You want one defending one-hander on the front if you can get it. Preferably one on the back as well, but my traits are shite, so unlucky for me. But the defending, the resist bonus gives you loads. Also, you'll notice the weapon enchant is a reduction to weapon and spell damage. So as long as you light and heavy attack, this will debuff the boss or targets or whatever you're up against once every six seconds for five seconds. This is a full out flat stam set if you're not familiar with it. Stam on everything. Now, I know this is a pain in the ass to get sometimes, not because the dungeon's difficult, because quite honestly it's not, apart from the last boss if people don't break free, but it's quite rare to get the sword and board. So what you can do is you can go three hulking dragger jewelry, which is essential. It must be the jewelry with magical recovery on them because this is all flat out stamina, robust jewelry and stamina set and everything like that. You can go three of those. Then what you can do with the sword and board to still get a decent amount of stamina back, you'll be 1k short, but it'll still be quite nice, is you can actually use a defending and reinforced shield and sword or axe, dagger, doesn't matter, one hand and shield of agility. Now that will give you a two piece bonus of 1.4k stamina. 
So you do get 2.4k for the five piece here, but if you can't get the sword and board, just get your agility ones. They're probably quite cheap at the moment because nobody wants a, a defending and reinforced agility uh, sword and board. Not quite yet anyway. So take advantage of that and grab one while you can if you haven't got the five piece. The shield, honestly, I want a reinforced. I got a sturdy instead. Reinforced would make quite a big difference to my resists because it would improve it by a, a set percentage. So my physical would hit 32, no problem. And my spell would actually go up, but that doesn't need to because it's already quite high. Also, if you gold, obviously, your armor, you're going to get a shit ton more resists as well. So you'll cap out. <clears throat> now, the so that's a five-piece Hulk and Drugger. I'm using the what I call the wonky Chewbacca helmet and shoulders. I was using the pirate skeleton and this combined, but honestly, you cap out way too high on your resists. Because the resists have been buffed now to 2.5k rather than 1.8, um, or 1.9, whatever it was, I actually end up hitting 38k Magicka, recover, uh, Magicka resists um, without any gold gear, so it's too high. So I'm using the whole set now, and remember I said I'm not using the resist buff, that's because this gives you the resist buff. You never need to cast that skill, you don't even need to slot it. And it gives you 1k health, which contributes to our large health pool. So that's very, very nice. Really, really handy set. I got sturdy on the head, I wanted to get reinforced, never mind. Uh, I got the vines on the shoulder, wanted to get sturdy, never mind. But you can reinforce whatever. I would go reinforce on the large pieces, sturdy on the small if you can get it, and then you will cap out your resists, especially if you gold that stuff. Second set, or final set even, is the Plague Doctor, of course. Same as the last patch, same as the last build. Five-piece Plague Doctor. Now, of course, everything on this is about health and healing received. You know, with 30.8% healing taken or healing received, now we're up to 34 or whatever it was a minute ago. I've forgotten now because my maths has fell out of my ears. So it's a very, very powerful set. And this obviously contributes to our overall health. Reinforced there, sturdy on the belt, reinforced on the legs. Unfortunately, I've got reinforced hands, but I want sturdy, never mind. And sturdy on the feet. So we've got lots of block cost reduction, lots of uh, resistances. And if you get the right traits, you don't have to gold them, but if you do, you're going to cap out. You're going to go to a really high resists like everything together we have one member in the guild actually who's got all this completely golded out um you can see the resists at the moment are 34 and a half and 32 well 31 um across the board they go very very high reinforced on the big pieces reinforced on the shield sturdy on all the small stuff um you don't need anything else now um i think that was it for the gear i can you can show you the shield and the weapon on the back bar if you like which is laughable and I have a preposterous shield, <laughs> so never mind, and uh, precise, but that's irrelevant, that one's not really a problem because I'm not in the back bar long enough, but yeah, the shield's crap, but I got one, they're just hard to get. <clears throat> now, the food, just to confirm what I am using, and what you can choose to use, this one gives you 5k max health and 457 magical recovery. That is really, really, really strong, and I would highly recommend it because you have more use of your igneous shields, and you shouldn't be just using it occasionally. You should be using it a lot. The other version of your food that you could use is this here, which is max health, max stamina, which obviously contributes to both pools. You will be lower in magical recovery to keep on top of your potions and just pace your igneous if you're using this food. That's for more stamina-intense fights, like maybe the warrior or axes or whatever you're more comfortable with. It's up to you, but I personally prefer this one. Now, how you apply that is you need to keep your stamina up and you need to keep your magicka up and you need to keep your shields up. So this buff must stay on. You've got to be like this all the time so you can see your heart in the middle there. Now, you need to do this to get your stamina back and this to shield. So in between them, you can just spam them and put bone shield on. By the time you've used a bone shield and hit a heavy attack, your stamina's back anyway. One heavy attack and one igneous will give you the stamina back it costs you for a bone shield. And that's all you have to do. Block the big stuff, keep blocking, and then let go again. It sounds really simple, and quite honestly it is. Just keep heavy attacking all the time for your sustain, and block the big stuff. Same as I said in the last video, same as I said in a video last November, block because you have to, not because you can. And what I mean again by this is, don't just hold block because the button is easy to press. Block when the big stuff comes in. If it's not a heavy attack or a big hit, you don't need to block. 
Simple as that. Use that time, use that window to get your resources back, to heal, to rebuff, to do whatever it is you need to do, to throw in some ultis, put down some mitigation, anything you need to do in between those attacks. Your window is when your guard is allowed to go down. I mean, look, the stamina recovery for three heavy attacks and a couple of Ignis is you're full already. It's not that hard to do. And that was with an expensive skill being used. Even when you're blocking, if your magicka recovery is going up, you can keep that Igneous up. <clears throat> so, um, I'm going to go in against something, something large, and see if I can sustain, basically. And see how much damage we take and how much we don't, and how simple it is now that we don't actually have to buff on the back bar. You can use that if you want, but we don't have to buff with spikes, whatever you want to call it, volatile armor. You just have to keep one buff on all the time. The rest are used efficiently based on your ability to sustain. These shields are all buttons that you can press when you need to. One you must keep up is Dragon Blood. That must stay on you all the time to get those bonuses. So, here we are in Sunny Hellra, my favorite place to practice tanks with. Um, the initial adds, I guess, don't really hit too hard. I mean, you normally you need a healer, but um, I'm going to show you how to sustain and what you should and shouldn't be blocking and what you should be looking out for. So, this is on Veteran as well, obviously, just to confirm that we are. Now, my previous tank, obviously, is using the Legion and a couple other sets. And he heals by himself without you even touching the control because of the sets that he's using. This guy doesn't, so I can actually take a shit ton of damage. Now let's see what happens. Don't need to buff anything apart from Dragon Blood because my resist buff is on me by default. So that never falls off. <clears throat> let's grab a few more. No, I don't think I'm getting any projectiles incoming. Not magic, I know I'm not, so that's useless. Block the big stuff. Keep shields up. Where's a heavy attack? Now you can block these for quite a while. Decent amount of time. The stamina's not really struggling too much. Especially since you'll be getting uh, help from the group as well. Heals are quite large, but then your block ulti is what I said earlier is essential. Boom. They can't... I'm in the air. <laughs> they can't even get to you. They just hit you. The dragon blood is a very large heal, but don't over spam it. Block the heavies. You can barely see what's going on in here. Shield will keep my health from taking any damage until it falls off. That's a huge heal. I'm trying to stand where you can see. Now, if you're just blocking, of course, you take quite a bit of damage. You piss out the ass, to be honest. You get loads and loads of damage through your block. Not as much as you would, but obviously you do take damage. But while the shield is on, you take nothing. You can just heal from underneath it. Heavy attack for your sustain. In fact, I'm not really struggling with my sustain because I'm barely blocking apart from that one, which was a heavy. And him. So just heavy attack, shield, heavy attack, shield, and just keep up your sustain with your stamina and your magicka. Get out so I can see. They all ping off you because you're perma blocking for seven seconds without any help at all. There we go. We'll waste loads of stamina there. Use a bone shield and a circle of protection and I'm still fine. Oh, I'm in, I'm in some fire, which is nice as I'm a vampire. This is without a healer. Let's do this pretty much all day. Just keep an eye on your resources. See, most of the time you don't even need to block, not unless it's a heavy attack. If your magic is low, put on a bone shield. If your stamina is low, put on an igneous. Full heal. That was what I was saying about the dragon blood critting. It's huge. Okay, let's get out of here. That was interesting. Jump off and way shrine.
Whee. So, hopefully you get the idea of how to keep up your sustain based on your heavy attacks and your shields combined. You have to be quite active with this. I mean, you can hold this f for a while on a single boss and pick up synergies and all that kind of stuff to keep your sustain up while spamming Igneous shields and keeping your buff up and giving other people shields. You can do that, but eventually you're going to run out. So you need to make sure that you know how to get that stuff back. Now that situation up there, obviously I would have been in healing springs and breath of life and all that kind of stuff. So I wouldn't have had to do this anywhere near as much. So I can probably do this a bit more. But you still don't struggle. So if there is a trouble, a situation where the healers are down or it's a really tough moment, you already know how to survive. Now if you can do that, you can then support your group very, very well by keeping these shields up, keeping these buffs up, and if you're still alive for a long period of time, you've obviously built up a lot of ultimate, which means you can fire off a warhorn instead of an O-Ship button. But the O-Ship button's there for you if you need it. Okay, of course, just to touch on where the gear actually comes from. Now, if we look at the map... If you watched the previous video, you should know this already, but if not, I will show you where the stuff comes from. Dashan, first of all, uh, world bosses specifically, um, you can get the Plague Doctor armor from. Very, very uh, simple, just rotate the bosses and get what you need. Uh, we'll note that the legs are very, very rare. They just don't seem to drop as often as the rest of the stuff, but persist, you'll get it, fail on that, look on the market. Although, since this video was first released, Plague Doctor wasn't too bad price-wise, but obviously since the Morrowind uh, expansion has been released, Plague Doctor has gone up. So just try and strike yourself a decent deal. Don't pay above the odds for it. Failing that, just farm it. You'll you'll get it in time. Now the other sets, uh, Hulking Dragur comes from where are we? East March. East March, the dungeon there, which is Diafrost Keep. You can go in there in normal and get the weapons, or if you want to go in there on veteran, you can get the jewelry. But like I said earlier, if you don't have enough luck getting the weapons, get three pieces of jewelry, and then just use an agility sword and board in defending and reinforced, and you'll be fine. Be about 1k less stamina, but it's okay. You can even change it out in your attributes if you prefer. Now the last piece, pieces, uh, is from this awful place here. Ruins of Mazatan, you don't have to do it on hard mode. Everyone's guaranteed a helmet at the end if you complete it. So if you do the veteran version of this, non-hard mode is fine. You can get the helmet and then just trade amongst yourselves to get the optimal piece. Now, the optimal piece would be reinforced in a heavy, which I don't have. I have a sturdy. But get whatever you can for now. Slap it on, you'll be fine. The shoulder, by the way, comes out of the Undaunted chest and it comes from the DLC chest in the Undaunted area, which is the middle one. So, hopefully that helped. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below. Also, if you're not subscribing, please do hit that button. It is free. Now, this particular build and all the rest of them have gone up on early access for the Patreon guys. First of all, obviously, they get two days early access. So, if you're interested in supporting the site by following uh, that particular um, perk, then, of course, there's a link in the description for that. So, you can go and have a look. Failing that. This will also be on the website and keep your eyes peeled on the Facebook page for updates as well. The website incidentally is zynodgaming.com. Once again, thank you all very much for watching and goodbye.